Now, I've already done a video on if you have a small amount, how to get it out, just using uh, screens and a magnet and panning. But what about if you got, you know, half five gallon bucket? You know, you got a couple five gallon buckets, well, then you're, you're going to have to get a, a table or a gold wheel or something like that. But most of us don't have that amount. We have a gallon, two gallons, three gallons, you know, something like that. And for that, uh, I use a little cleanup suits. Um, they're, they're simple to build, they cost next to nothing. There's all kinds of products on the market um, and they all pretty much do the same thing. So if you want something to do, it's a fun little project, only takes a few hours to build them and it costs next to nothing. And so I'll show you how we do it. Okay, well, I've already picked up the materials we need. I, I got them uh, yesterday on the way home from work. So right now, let's go outside and I'll show you the tools we need to uh, get this job done. Okay, hopefully this is all the tools you're going to need. And some of these you may not need. But you're going to need a pair of good sharp scissors. I use whiteout to mark the matting because it's just much easier to see. A square with a 45 pencil. Uh, snips. You can use the scissors. You can use a hacksaw. There's different methods to cut the uh, plastic. I just like the snips because I got them and they're easy. Um, a female hose fitting. This is just a repair kit. They're real cheap at the hardware store. A chunk of uh, uh, tubing that will fit onto that. The drill, the yardstick, a straight edge, and I use a square to uh, square up my matting. That's hopefully all the tools we're going to need. We'll find out. Okay, all the supplies you need as far as uh, the the actual sluice itself. Uh, I bought everything at the, my local big big box store. Uh, you can go to Lowe's, Home Depot. I'm sure uh, any hardware store is going to have most everything. Um, the price of all the stuff I bought uh, comes right to ten dollars. I think it was uh, ten ten thirty or something like that. So basically, when you're all done, now I didn't buy glue. I had glue, but as far as the the gutter, the matting, the hose fitting, and all that, uh, it all came to just about ten dollars. Okay. Let's get started making this. Okay, thing. now the first thing we want to do is uh, figure out how wide to cut our matting. And uh, the matting I'm using is, I like a, a good square ribbed matting. And uh, I'll give you a close up of that, show you uh, what I'm talking about. Okay, hopefully you can see here that this is just a sharp square ribbed matting. And preferably you want a nice thin matting. You don't want it real thick. You want it as thin as you can get it so uh, it's more flexible. Okay, the first thing we got to do is we got to square the edge of our matting. We want the, the edge of the matting square to our uh, our ribs and I'm sure when they, they cut it store it's not going to be square. So uh, let me show you how I do that. Now when I'm working on the matting I work on it with the with the ribs down, work on the back side. But what a, a good practice to do to make sure you don't cut it the wrong way is I will mark on here which way my ribs go. Just put a line across there so you know the ribs are going this way. So we want to cut our, our piece this way. But before we do that, we need a straight edge. Now, this edge I've already straightened. But you can do it with a with a carpenter square. You can just lay it against one edge, mark that edge square, and uh, just cut it off. 
whatever it takes to make it a nice square edge. Okay, now we gotta know how wide okay. to cut this. In the gutter, there'll be a lip right here that comes down that will lock your uh, matting in. So you want to cut your matting the length from the inside of this lip to that side. And the easiest way to get that measurement is you take a piece of paper, and I like the paper that's a little heavier than regular paper, but regular paper will work. And you just put it in the box, you shove it down so it's locked, then you pull it in good and tight. Go to the other side, make sure it's good and tight. And then where that lip is, you gotta make sure your hands are, are dirty. This is the easiest way. You get it a little bit wet, like the thumb a little bit wet, and then you just rub down that edge. And that will make a line right where you wanna cut it off. Okay, we'll cut that. Okay, now we're going to take our scissors and we're going to cut right down that line. Then we'll put it back in the box and check it. Okay, you can see it's fitting, it's fitting perfect. Now, your matting is thicker, so you are going to have to subtract from this. So, I found you got to subtract, oh, like an eighth of an inch or a quarter of an inch, depending on your matting. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we pull our paper out. We lay it down on the edge of our matting. Take our marker and mark this edge. That's how wide we want to cut it. Okay, now I'm going to measure that. And we have about six and three eighths. So we're going to knock off an eighth. So we're going to go with six and a quarter. We're going to mark that, then we're going to go to the far end, Okay, we're going to go to the far end and we'll mark it at six and a quarter. Then we lay our straight edge down and scribe our line. And that's where we want to cut it. Okay, we've got our matting all nice and cut. Now we'll fit it in there and make sure it fits perfect. Now we've got it cut, we're going to fit it. Now to put it in, I just lay it on top and just shove it down in and just concentrate on one side. Get it down to where this side is locked up in where it goes. Then you can push the whole thing down and come down to one end, reach in and hook it. Then you just kind of keep your finger and your thumb in there and you can just go down and shove it right underneath. And you can see here, we got her cut right the first time. Now, if you have a hump in the middle, uh, you just take the scissors and cut just a little bit off the edge and try it again until you get it where it lays flat all the way down. You don't want any bumps in the bottom here. It's got to be nice and flat when you're all done. Now, to get this out, I found the easy way, easiest way to do that is take your yardstick 
and just shove it down underneath then reach down and turn it sideways turn it up to it sideways and just reach down and grab it and you can take it right out okay now we have to cut our trough to length but before we do that we got to form our end okay now you need to put an end on this and I found the easiest, quickest way is to just cut this and fold it up. So I'll show you how you do that right now. And this is where I use my snips. And, you know, I'm a metal worker, so I got snips. Uh, you can use good sharp scissors. You can use a hacksaw, um, you know, to cut this. This stuff cuts fairly easy. It's tough, but it cuts easy. Okay, let me show you how I lay this out. Okay, the first thing we're gonna need to do is figure out what our depth is. So you take any kind of a straight edge and just lay it across the top. You take your uh, ruler and you measure it and we have two inches of depth. Okay, then we'll flip this over. Okay, now now we need to measure down two inches. That way after we bend this 90 degrees, this will be sticking up so it'll be level with the top. So we come down here two inches, make a mark. Then you take your square. Okay, we wanna mark that square across there and then we'll Continue all the way around. We want to mark this. All the way around the, the gutter. So now we have a line that's two inches from the end. And now we will take the uh, 45 part of the square and you'll lay that on here going away from the end. You want to line it up with this line down at the bottom. And you got to pretty much just eyeball it. And we go over the other side and do the same thing. You can sight right down that line and then draw a nice, nice 45 degree line. Okay, you should end up with 45 degree line, 90 degree line. Now, we are going to cut this piece out of here. Okay, I'll take my snips. And we wanna cut that right on that line. Okay, now we've cut that piece out right down level at the bottom. We'll flip it over and do the same thing on this side. Okay, now we've got both sides notched out. Now, you want to set it down on a solid surface and bend it across these points. You can spread this out a little bit and bend that up. It's not gonna stay, but bend it up as much as you can. Okay, now this is where it gets kind of tricky. These are gonna come to the inside and they're gonna lay in here like this. Well, you wanna lock this piece underneath this. This height is too long. You're going to have to notch this. And I like to cut this lock out of here. So what I like to do is this lock right here is I like to come right down here and just cut this off both sides. 
So I'll do that right now. Okay, the next thing we want to do is we need to put a notch in this upper edge. And, you know, I'm going to come down, oh, an eighth of an inch or so. And this is kind of a trial and error. And so we'll take a little notch out of that. Okay, now we'll see if we can fit that in there. Okay, you, you gotta pull both sides in and bend this up. Then you can twist to one side, pulling the bottom towards you. Put it in there and it'll lock. Okay, now it looks like we're, we're good on the height, so now we're going to cut this side the same way. And we'll lock this one in. Just roll that bottom towards the center of the gutter where you push that in, and it'll just kind of lock in there. And now we got a end on our trough. Now what I like to do, you can run a screw in here. I like to pull that up tight, drill it and put a pop rivet in it because I'm a metal worker and I got pop rivets and all that good stuff. Okay, I'm gonna rivet this right now. Okay, now we got this locked in place. I'm gonna just clamp it down with a pair of vice grips. Now we want to drill down in the bottom corner. That's where you want to pop rivet, or if you use a screw, whatever you want to use, that's the best spot to put it. So I'm going to drill that. Drill our hole. Okay, I got the hole in there. We'll just shut the old pop rivet in there. Now I'm using an aluminum pop rivet. Make sure we're all the way in. You can see we got the rivet in here, rivet there, we got a nice end on it now. I'll go ahead and put that rivet in the other side. Okay, now we need to put in our water source and uh, we want to be able to hook a garden hose to it. And you know, we can use a regular garden hose or you can use a, a little, like a bilge pump, but uh, you want a way to attach it and a garden hose is the best way. And you can buy these, these little fittings for next to nothing. They're just a hose repair fitting. But we've got to drill a hole for this to go on. And for that, and I didn't have it at the beginning of the video, but uh, you need, uh, I don't know, I call them unibets. It's just a stepped drill bit. And they work real well because they're not very aggressive so that you don't have to worry about it grabbing and tearing up the plastic and you can just keep going one step at a time until you get the hole disc right. Okay, let's drill this hole. Okay, we're gonna want our hole in the center. So we'll measure this, and we're three inches wide. So we'll just come to an inch and a half, and we'll mark that. Then we wanna line our just eyeball it this way, and it looks like right about there is where we want to be. So, right there is where we want to drill the hole. Okay, now we just take a unit bit, get it lined up. Just go in a ways. Let's check it. Not far enough. 
Go up one more. We need more. And that's it. Okay, we got our, our end all formed. We got our hole drilled in it. Okay, now the reason we haven't cut this to length yet is if you mess this up, just cut it off and, and try it again. And uh, if you cut it to length, then you're going to be too short. So now that we got this all done, we can now cut it to length. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to measure from this point right here where, the, where we folded up our, our end. We want to measure down the length of our matting and cut it off, or we can just lay our matting in there, mark it, and cut it off. Now we got this all ready to go. Now with the point where we're going to put the mat in. Now we have two ways to do this. We can cut our mat a little bit narrower and slide it in, make it so it can slide in and out, or we can glue it in. The method we're going to do first is we're going to glue it in, and then I'm going to make another one of these and we're going to slide it in. Uh, I prefer gluing them in uh, for, for only one reason, and that is when you glue them in, you have this flat portion here, and it allows you to use more of the flat. Where if you're going to slide it out, you're going to have to cut it a little smaller so you can get it out, and it, it'll be more rounded here. And I'll show you that after we complete the two. Okay, let's get this thing, uh, we're going to take them and wash it down. Uh, I'm going to wipe it down with solvent so it's nice and clean. You can use soap and water, uh, but we want it all nice and clean, no residue on the inside to our glue stick. Okay, now there's two different ways to glue this. One way is to just spray one side, one side of your, your mat or if you're painting your glue on, you just do one side from here up, same thing on the mat, and then put your mat all the way in like it was done and let that glue dry. And once that glue's dry, you can pull your mat loose, glue the bottom and the other side because then you don't have to worry about it setting up in the wrong spot because it's already glued in place. Or if you want to do it the quick and uh, fearless method, you can do it all at once. We are going to do it the two-stage method because I'm filming this and I don't want to mess it up. So we're going to go ahead and glue one side in. Now what I do to make sure I don't mess up is I lay it here like it's supposed to go. Then I will just flop it over so I know I want to glue this edge, so now I have to put glue on this edge. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and put the glue on the mat first. And we're only going to be doing that top third. Okay, now we put it on the trough. And very quickly, we got to get that put in there. Got to make sure you got your end up against the plastic here and then just kind of shove it all in now. And once we got it in place, then go ahead and lock the other side in. Okay. 
Make sure you work all the bubbles out of it. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Now we'll let that dry for an hour or two. The one side that we have glued is dry now. You can see this side is still free. But this side's attached, so we're now set. Now we're going to pull this back and glue this side. And we got to go quick because we we'll only get one shot at it. Okay, we're going to pull this back and go ahead and spray our glue in and then very quickly put it back together. Okay. Now we'll get it started. And get her shoved up in there. Okay. Then we want to go ahead and Make sure everything's down. All right. We're in, everything looks good. Now we'll just let that dry. And now, before this sets up, take a rag, put a little solvent on it, and we can wipe the glue off of this edge. But if you wait till it dries, it's real hard to get it off. Hey. Right. We'll give her an hour or so to dry and then we'll go to the next step. Now we need to uh, put in our water source. We've got our hole drilled here. We drilled it out to the size of our uh, hose fitting coupling. Now what we're gonna do is we got our uh, female hose coupling. Let me spin this up. And we just push that in. Get her in good and tight. We got her in there. Now we'll cut a piece of hose to uh, go over the end of this to hold it in there. Now I just have some clear plastic hose here. I'm gonna just cut it off at, you know, the length really doesn't matter. Now we just take our hose, slide it on the end of that. And uh, if, if you want, you can put a hose clamp on it. If it fits good and tight, then uh, you may not need a hose clamp. And that's pretty much it. Okay, now we're gonna do the one where we just make the mat so you can slide it out. Now I've just finished building another, another trough here and uh, got the mat already cut so let me show you how I do this. Okay, now this mat, I've cut another eighth of an inch off. It is just a hair under six inches wide. So what we're gonna do, same as we did before, we just drop this in, get one side set up, slide it back up to where you're, you're hitting on the edge here. Then you slide it all the way in now what I do is I lock one end in, then go down to the other end, lock it in, and then just run your, your finger down like that, and we're in. And then after we've run our material and you want to clean up, you can just grab the end and slide it out. And that's pretty much it. Okay, now we have our two troughs here and I'll show you the difference uh, on how the mat lays in there. Let me get over here where I can get in a little closer. Okay, here we can, here we can see the difference between the two mats. This is our glued mat. You'll notice the flat surface it's running from you know here to here and then on this one this is our round surface this is the one that slides in and out 
and you'll notice that we've only got from maybe here to here with the flat surface on, on this one you know probably half the flat surface we do with the glued one okay well basically that's it now one thing I did want to say is these things you have to classify your material and I would not run anything that sat on top of a 20 mesh screen or larger because these riffles are fairly small and they're fairly shallow so if your materials too large it'll just bounce over the top of the riffles and go on out and you know anything is 20 mesh or larger you should be able to just pan out and pick your gold up um, the other thing is when you run them you have to classify the material and run each classification now I was going to show you in this video how to how to set these up and run them but I'm thinking this video is already too long and my nice sunny day is is going away quick uh, I got big clouds coming through the winds picking up and I think you know within the next hour or so I'm gonna get some rain so I will be making a video on how to run this is uh, probably tomorrow or the next day depending on the weather so right now I'm going to say if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, go ahead and click that subscribe button. And then up in the corner, if you click on that bell, you'll get notification the next time I put a video out. So right now, I'm going to get my mess cleaned up, get everything put away just in case it does rain. So you have a wonderful day.